Once there was a group of, uh, of students, university students, that uh, went in to see the Lubavitcher Rebbe. It seems that in the first years that the Rebbe assumed his leadership, is there were groups of students that were brought in from different universities to speak to the Rebbe, Jewish students. These students did really not know anything about Judaism. And they were in the sitting in the same room with this man who knew everything about Judaism. And they asked him a very simple question. They said, listen, we've learned the, these other religions and the Eastern religions that there's you know, life after death and reincarnations. Does Judaism believe in life after death? And the Rebbe answered, Judaism doesn't really believe in death. Judaism just believes different forms of life. There's life in the body, life outside of the body. <clears throat> but Judaism believes in life. So the question really is, is there life after birth? When we're born, do we really feel this eternal life that's inside of us that's really above death, that's above time, that's above any difficulties? Do we feel this? Well, the answer is, is that we can. And that's what happened when God gave the Torah to the Jewish people. First of all, he took them out of Egypt and he gave them the Torah. In Egypt, the essence of being in Egypt was to be a servant. The Jews were servants. They were servants of Paro. And God took them out of being servants to Paro and he brought them to Mount Sinai and revealed himself. Pure life. And when the Jews felt this pure life, what did they feel? Responsibility. Suddenly they became servants to the creator of the universe. And there can be nothing greater. There can be nothing more happy. There can be nothing more meaningful. There can be nothing more alive than to serve the creator of the universe. And what does the creator of the universe want? Paro wanted to build pyramids or sphinxes or whatever he did. What does God want? God wants us to build the whole entire world, to make the world a good place, a productive place, to use all of our potential. You have the potential to be a doctor, be the best you can. Potential to be a lawyer, be the most honest you can. The best potential to be a builder, build the biggest and the strongest. You have potential to make people happy, make them happy. Whatever your potential is, and we have potential, every single human being in the world has potential that they don't know anything about. That's why it says in Pirkei Avot, the ethics of the fathers, who is wise, someone who learns from every man. Because every human being in the world, how many human beings are there, nine billion? Well, there's nine billion lessons for me to learn. On the other hand, there's some lesson that I have that nobody else has. Every human being has an obligation, an obligation from the Torah to be a teacher to all mankind and to learn from all mankind. That's what happens when the Jews, Jewish people got the Torah. We got true life. We were revealed to us what true responsibility is and how important that we are. Each and every person is being created by the Creator with responsibility to make this world a meaningful place, a blessed place, and even a holy place. And that's going to be what Mashiach is going to do. Mashiach will be a person just like Moses that's going to take the Jews out of all of their inferiority feelings and make them realize what tremendous potential they are and to teach the whole world what potential every human being has. That's why we need Mashiach now. <laughs> Moment of Wisdom. Some brief and life-changing moments. Join us. Subscribe to Moment of Wisdom channels on YouTube, Telegram, Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp.